But in my defense, I did not know we were free to leave. <laughs> my name is Kelly Terranova. I realize you are puzzled. And some of the fellas look disappointed. <laughs> he bought tickets thinking, oh, Kelly Terranova. I hope she's attractive. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> what a great looking crowd. Thank you all for being here. By means of introduction, my name is Kelly Terranova. I am from a state called West Virginia. That's very kind, that's very kind. Is there anyone in the room from West Virginia? Virginia. Really? Kentucky. That's different. <laughs> different state. All of a sudden we're playing, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? That's different. I knew there were no West Virginians here because West Virginians, we do not begin a journey that requires more than one tank of gas. <laughs> I lived in West Virginia till I was 18, but in my defense, I did not know we were free to leave. <laughs> Turns out it's like work release. <laughs> you can walk away, they don't look for you or anything. <laughs> I don't live there anymore, but I retain some of the accent and I try to keep it under control because when people find you have a southern accent, they make certain assumptions. We're going to cover one of those right now. Not all of us are in to NASCAR. <laughs> Baby, if I want to see rednecks driving circles, I go to the Walmart and sit in the parking lot. <laughs> I got stuff to do. I have a way to make NASCAR better. You ready? I'm going to steal an idea from golf. Golf has something called the senior tour. Have you heard of this? It's old guys playing golf. Who knew? <laughs> They're just playing golf. They're not running track. I would pay to see the old man gymnastics. That'd be cool. <laughs> But we're here today to help NASCAR. Here's my idea. Work with me, Dry Bar. The Senior NASCAR Tour. The final lap. <laughs> and it's nothing but white Mercury Grand Marquis. <laughs> Just rolling around that track about 35 miles an hour. <laughs> you call it the Denny's Five. And you wouldn't even need those big racing goggles, you know, the big face shields, because most of the seniors have those big sunglasses, the big wraparound. So why is that? If your little peanut head's not but that big, you don't need Oakley's out to here. My Nana came to a family reunion, scared the daylights out of me. I'm like, ah, Robo Nana. She had to hear. <laughs> I said, Nana, are we hunting predator today? <laughs> she told me she got those big wraparound glasses free with a Cadillac. <laughs> or a cataract, you can't understand. <laughs> Nana. I was in town today making my way around and I saw one of those old people tour buses that go on the tours together and they were all getting off the bus. They had the big sun, they looked like pod people getting off the mothership, right? And this one lady, bless her, oh, do you know bless her heart? Do you know about that? Okay, okay, that's code word for I'm about to say something mean and I don't want you to think less of me. <laughs> Just so you know. So this one woman, thank you, she's pulling oxygen and it kind of looked like she's getting ready to weld something. I thought, oh no, the bus is broke. You see a lot of different things. You see a lot of different things. You see peculiar things. That's my job. I go out into the world, I make my way in the world, and I see funny things, and I report back to you. I'm kind of like Instagram stories. That's my job, okay? Except I don't pout when you don't like me. Um, 
I flew here. I, I flew from an airport in, 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 frankly, in North Carolina. I can't tell you the, the name of the, of the place because I don't want them to make, feel like I'm picking on them. But I go in the airport, and right there, beside the big welcome to Charlotte sign is... <laughs> I gave it away. It's, it's a museum. Woo! I guarantee no one ever left that airport going, oh man, not enough culture. <laughs> it's like a portrait gallery of aviation pioneers like Chuck Yeager, a West Virginian, by the way, and the Wright brothers. I saw a fella holding his little boy's hand. They were admiring a portrait of Amelia Earhart. But I overheard, there's a little sign he's reading. He's like, son, that there, that's a Amelia. Sound it out, did he? Sound it out. Amelia, Am oh, Amelia Earnhardt. That's Dale Jr.'s Mimo. Woo! <laughs> and I said, what? But I said, what, really loud? <laughs> You know, sometimes you're in a big open space and you try to talk above the noise and as soon as you do, everybody else just shut up. <laughs> he looked at me, he walked closer, he got bigger, he was big. And I'm kind of a, what's, what's the word, mm, a wimp. <laughs> I panicked, dude, I played along. I said, that's what I heard, sir. I believe that Dale Jr.'s pawpaw and her met down there at Talladega one year. <laughs> and they fell in love and she got on a plane and we never saw that lady again. <laughs> now, I don't know what's worse that he's telling the stupid story or the fact that this airport decided to put up pictures of people who died in airplanes. <laughs> Are you serious? Baby, I'm not wild about flying as it is. I don't need to walk through the plane crash hall of fame <laughs> on the way to concourse B. Walking through, here's some famous people who didn't make it. <laughs> you know what else? I'm not crazy about waiting for my plane at the Buddy Holly Lounge. I'm not doing that either. <laughs> I don't want a La Bamba burger, Brenda. No, I don't. Now listen, I'm not, I can't tell you the name of the airline that I flew because of a blog post that I made. Um, <laughs> let's just say it's an American airline. <laughs> not everybody got that. <laughs> listen, I'm not one of those people that waxes poetic about the bygone days of air travel. People talk about it like it was, no, it's always kind of been crappy. Can we, can we agree on that? They, they used to have more room. People used to dress better. The problem today, the way I see it, is they nickel and, you know what I mean when I say they nickel and dime you? Every little thing. You want to put a bag under this plane? Pay me. You want to select your seat, do you? Pay me. Would you like those oxygen masks to fall down in an emergency? Would you like that? Would you, would you? Swipe your card. <laughs> it's coming. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> the only extra that most airlines still include, and I say most, if you're flying this one discount airline, I can't help you. Can't tell you the name of that one either. But uh, <laughs> we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? Okay, that might be a little clue. <laughs> that airline, they are so cheap, they charge you by the peanut. Well, they no longer have peanuts, of course, because Connor has an allergy or whatever. I don't know. Can we stop with the peanut allergies, please? I went to school, frankly, more than 12 years of public school. <laughs> Ain't never met a kid with a peanut allergy. And now they're everywhere. I figured out why. Hose water. Kids stop drinking hose water. <laughs> Drink hose. Now you send your kid out with a vacuum packed stainless steel Mars rover. Please. 
drink out of the hose, Connor. Oh, and if you've got a kid named Connor, that, that's just a generic white kid name I use. Don't be offended. It's just, you know them all, Connor, Cooper, Walker, and Uber. Um, <laughs> If you're on that airline, baby, and the seat reclines, it's broken. It was not meant to do that. It was hoop -dee. I can't believe those airplanes even take off. I don't think they do. I think the windows are actually TVs. And they show pictures of clouds. <laughs> Just like that Hogwarts Express ride. They <laughs> said, Mommy, why is Hagrid beside the plane? What is that? <laughs> No, but most airlines, that other one accepted, most give you at least a complimentary or free, if you didn't get to the SAT part of school, free <laughs> beverage. And I'm here to beg you, American Airlines, can we please go hog wild and break out a whole can of soda. You with me over here? A whole can of soda. Over here, a whole can of soda. Cause you know what I am? I'm a grown man. And you know what I can handle? 12 ounces of soda. I don't need a sippy cup, Brenda. Seriously, those flight attendants act like they're buying that out of their own pocket. Like they're required to show up at TSA with a carry-on and a six-pack of Fresca. No, you're not. Your company buys that for you to give to me. That's your job. But they are so high and mighty. They come down the aisle with that Soviet-era aluminum beverage cart. Like they're rolling the crown jewels. Watch your elbow, watch your knee. And don't get in front of them, right? They will mow you down. Boom, 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 boom. It's like Captain Sully killed them geese, I'm telling you. Remember that? Remember Captain Sully, the hero on the Hudson? In the Goose community, that is remembered differently as the massacre on the Hudson, just so you know. It's all about your point of view. Uh, so then finally you flag her down and she rummages around in that cart and snatches out what appears to be a Dixie-sized cup. Who remembers Dixie cup? Okay. This little thing, its greatest wish is to be a Dixie cup. I drank more NyQuil than that for breakfast. What are we doing? Oh, and then she starts putting ice in this cup like that's her job. Filling it up. Ice, ice, baby. Uh, ice, ice. <laughs> Even Anna and Elsa are going, gee whiz, lady, that's a lot of ice. <laughs> They bet me I couldn't get a frozen joke in this show. Yes, I can. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> but at least with the domestic airline, you know what you're getting. I'm fortunate to work, frankly, all over the world. And sometimes these other airlines, you don't have the same amenities. I just got off, uh, I was working a, uh, a little island off the coast of Honduras, and I had to get back home. I had to fly from that little island to El Salvador, whoo, the garden spot of Central America, <laughs> to get back to the U.S. Now, I will tell you that Honduras, to El Salvador, listen, it's, it's rustic, okay? Can, is that a nice word, rustic? For, it's, sketchy is not, not a nice word. Um, it's just not a transportation hub. And so I'm looking, I'm already concerned, and I look at my ticket, you know, I'm on an airline that I have never heard of. Not funny, never heard of. <laughs> By applause, Drybar, who has ever flown on Cheetah? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> cheetah. Cheetah is a wonderful, powerful, exotic animal. You know what it doesn't do? Fly. <laughs> why, oh why would you name an airline after an animal to scamper in the dirt. <laughs> yes, I know a cheetah is fast. You know what else is fast? An avalanche. <laughs> I'm not flying them either. 
And no, so I go into this airport. Well, I say in, you don't really go in. Like you go into a farmer's market, there's, there's tarps for goodness sake. Um, so you're kind of in. Usually when I go inside an airport, I, I reflexively glance up for a TV monitor to find a flight number. Do you do that? In Honduras, there was no TV. And let's be clear, there may not have been electricity. But, <laughs> but what they had, and some of y'all got to help me out. You may not know what this is. An old Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> Remember that's a sketch? Okay, it's hanging on a coat hanger, and before it between flights, some old lady gets a little giant ladder and scampers up and grabs it down. <laughs> oh, and I'm already freaked out, and I see my flight number, y'all. My flight number is 5050. Yes, I'm on Cheetah 5050. <laughs> Am I gonna survive this flight? Oh, and then I see the plane. Y'all, this airplane was so... Oh, wait, there's some younger folks. What I'm going to do now, this is an old-timey throwback style of telling a joke. See if you like it. <clears throat> this airplane was so small. How small was it? First of all, give yourselves a round of applause. That was good. That was good. Y'all could be on a hee-haw. That was good. <laughs> And just so you know, that is a uniquely American response. I learned that doing a cruise out of England over Christmas. I'm up there, this airplane is, and they're like. He was going to tell us about the size of the aircraft. <laughs> and now he's just standing there <laughs> with that stupid look on his face. <laughs> Do you think he's forgotten? <laughs> he doesn't look very smart. <laughs> the airplane was so small, there were birds birds in the air flirting with my plane. <laughs> hey, Big Daddy. 50-50. It was so small that the fella sitting in front of me, when he reclined his seat, he became the fellow behind me. And he was the pilot, is that weird? <laughs> I want you to, especially the fellas in the audience, the gentlemen, I want you to appreciate the uncomfortable nature. I'm sitting there, minding my own business, doing my crossword puzzle, cause that's my travel jam. And I look down to do the puzzle, and there's another guy looking back up. <laughs> that's awkward eye contact, yes? <laughs> But I thought, you know what? If I'm uncomfortable, I'm sure that he's uncomfortable. I'm trying to be a better human. I'm going to be empathetic to his plight. I'm going to make him more comfortable. I'm going to massage his head. Because who doesn't like a head massage? Turns out, this guy. This guy, not a fan. Frankly, he kind of flipped out. And I, I had to sing Soft Kitty. <laughs> oh, kitty. What I should have done was offer to trim his nose hair. Older fellas, I'm looking at you. Trim the nose hair. This guy sneezed. It looked like one of those party favorites. Okay, y'all over here, you're not appreciating how small the plane was. Let me see if I can give you an example. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, by applause, who's ever been to Disney? Few of y'all, few of you, okay, okay. At Disney is a ride called Dumbo, the flying elephant. Who's been on to Dumbo? Okay. Then you've been on Cheetah 50-50, that's what I'm saying. 
This happened like three days ago. I'm still freaked out. Okay, I want to take you along on Cheetah 5050. Now pretend you're in the seats and this is the cockpit. Over here is the pilot. Oh yeah, the pilot. This guy showed the pilot, a man of skill and authority and training and respect. The man who's going to fly me across the water to a new country. He shows up for work wearing flip-flops. <laughs> you're okay with that? You're going to fly a plane, but you haven't mastered shoelaces. <laughs> he's got on long pants, thankfully, a uniform shirt, but he's got no rank. You know how they wear the rank? He had what appeared to be one Captain America badge. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Cap, what are we avenging, dude? Oh, he had a name tag, but I don't know his name because you know why? It wasn't a regular name tag. It was one of those, hello. <laughs> My name is dot, dot, dot. And it was blank. <laughs> I later overheard his name. One of the crew persons said his name. His name, y'all, <laughs> Scooter. I'm like, wow, that's something else that doesn't fly. So, <laughs> so pretend you're on the plane. This is the cockpit. Over here is Captain Scooter. Oh, who's supposed to sit over here? Co-pilot, not on my plane, baby. On Cheetah 5050, there was a fella sitting there, regular fella. <laughs> Just some dude. But to be fair, he did call shotgun, and that's the rule. Did you know? <laughs> did you know you could do that? Who, who flies a lot, anybody? Over here, okay. Next time you're on an airplane, man, take my word. Just get on that plane, and in your loudest voice say, shot, well, that's a bad idea, hang on. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Now that I hear it out loud, that's a bad idea. Okay. That's a no-fly list kind of deal. And don't do it trying to be funny. So the comedian said the comedian won't be there. So the plane is so tiny, and we're going to take over taxiing. Everybody knows what taxiing is. We're in the airplane, rolling on the ground, preparing to take off. And I see the back of Scooter's head. And you're all packed in there, and you can see his head because there's no door or curtain. There's not even beads. <laughs> hey, you can look right in. <laughs> and Scooter has one hand on the airplane steering wheel, and the other hand got his phone. I watch as he punches in Google Maps. <laughs> Are you serious? We're gonna get from Honduras to El Salvador on Google Maps. I'm like, what if Angry Birds pops up? This was my concern. And while I'm coming to grips with these shenanigans, he goes to his pocket and pulls out a post-it note. Everybody knows post-it note, right? <laughs> Mashes it onto the dashboard. Friends, there were four words on the post-it. Four words gave me the chills. Lower wheels <laughs> before landing. <laughs> My pilot needs a cheat sheet <laughs> for put your wheels down before you land. And I want you to pay attention to how I reported that. That note, already written. He didn't jot it down as a last minute. No, no, this was prepared in advance. Yes, this suggests to me there is an incident. <laughs> Somewhere in his past when he tried to land that airplane with no wheels. <laughs> and I'm thinking, if you're a pilot who may not remember to put your wheels down, why don't you leave them down, Sparky? <laughs> you can fly with wheels down. <laughs> I drive with the trunk open all the time. 
Oh, you do things through the stories. You know, if you're in a bad situation, I'll have a good story to tell later. I've been doing comedy now more than 20 years. And I also, oh, that's very kind. I also do some acting, nothing big, but it's nice to be recognized, you know, for things like just, just here during this taping weekend. I've had folks tell me they recognize me from House of Cards. Pretty cool on Netflix, right? And from Friday Night Lights on NBC, it's a cool show. And from Parks and Rec, which is a classic show. Now, that's very kind. I've never been on any of those shows. <laughs> but I'm such a horrible person. I'm like, thanks for watching. <laughs> if you're an attractive woman who thinks I may have been on the Big Bang Theory, well, bazinga, baby, I'm Sheldon. I don't care. <laughs> I do not care. I was out here in front just a minute ago, and a lady said she knew me from TV. I said, thank you, from what? She said, from the TV show Pawn Stars. <laughs> she thought I was chumly. She thought I was... <laughs> I'm trying to exercise, and I'm chumly? She said, oh, but you must dye your beard. Yeah, this is the color I would choose. <laughs> Gotta get something from the old fart collection, please. <laughs> Who's been to an Ikea? Y'all gonna, you got an Ikea up the road here a little bit. I was in there today for 11 and a half hours. I couldn't get out. How do you get out of that store? If that store ever catches fire, everybody gonna burn. That's why there's a restaurant. Otherwise, you would starve. You would starve right there in the Poang chair section. <laughs> Have you eaten at Ikea? What did you eat? Yell it out. Meatballs. meatballs. You loved them. Those meat, but they're just like spherical hamburgers. You know, right? It's no big deal. It was even a scandal in Europe about what kind of meat was in the meatball. And I'm just here to say, if you're buying meatballs at a furniture store, <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> the furniture's fine. You got to put it together, right? You know that. You got That's the number three leading cause of relationship distress in Texas <laughs> is misunderstood IKEA directions. <laughs> it says tighten the hex nut. You are a hex nut. <laughs> and oh, they keep like the Swedish or I don't know Nordic names. Like, you can't go in there and buy a stool. I mean, you can buy a stool. It's not called stool. It's called, like, flippa dooga flugin flugin or something like that. What? Come on, Olaf. I ain't got time. And that's two frozen jokes, just so you know. That's two. Let it go. I wanted to buy a desk for my daughter what I would call a student desk. Nothing fancy for her room, a simple desk. They had one. It's not called desk. It is called, and you can Google this, a skunk. S-K-U-N-K, and there are two little dots above the U, which is where the spray comes out. <laughs> and yeah, it was black and white. Yes, it was, absolutely. <laughs> I told my daughter I was going to put a skunk in her room. <laughs> my wife said, put it in my son's room and make his room smell better. <laughs> Kid does not do laundry. Oh, that reminds me. Oh, sorry, I got to go off on the tan. I, listen, on the road a lot, I got to visit where I can, and I got to do laundry. And I love you all, but I've learned something, and it's just the same here as any place else. The laundromat, never in a good part of town. <laughs> You never hear this, the laundromat? Well, sure, friend, that's right there beside the Starbucks. No. It's always like, you know where the prison is? <laughs> so I went to this laundromat and you go in and there's like a promotion because you gotta buy tokens for the machine, the machines take tokens. And the guy says, thank you. And I said, thanks. And he said, hey, wait, don't forget your raffle ticket. Turns out at this laundromat, every load of laundry you do, they put you into a raffle, a drawing for a flat screen TV. I know. I was going to wash all this separate. That's fantastic. 
I'm thinking sock, sock, jeans, drawers, shirt, shirt. That's six loads right there. You gotta be in it to win it, baby. But then I thought about it a little extra, and I said, oh, dude, that's a cool promotion, but I'm gonna bet that most of your customers, and let's be honest, all of them have probably got a pretty nice TV. They could use a washer and dryer. Yeah, he didn't think I was as funny as you did. He, uh, <laughs> he kind of snatched my tokens back and I had to go to the one over near the prison. But <laughs> I do like exploring new places and your community is no doubt. What a beautiful place. Listen, I get to go to some of the most beautiful places. Oh, I was just, dude, I was in Mexico, right? And I, I've been there a bunch, and I, but I've never had like Mexican cuisine because they don't have the chalupas and whatnot there. So I had to go. <laughs> Like numero cuatro. Um, and so I went to the taxi driver and I said, sir, please take me, uh, por favor, uh, uh, to where the locals eat. And this fella took me to a Five Guys. <laughs> Do you have Five Guys where you live? All right. Here's a little tip from me to you. Don't order the large French fry at Five Guys. It comes in a wheelbarrow, it's huge. That's the only French fry that's bad for your back. So I'm in this little town eating, eating Idaho, pretty much, I'm eating this stuff. And this lady, bless her. I'm gonna describe this lady to you with love in my heart. She's leaving the Five Guys with a bag of Five Guys in each hand. I'm thinking, that's like 10 guys, that's a lot of guys. It's <laughs> a little math joke. Um, I will describe her to you as my Nana would have described her, with love and respect in my heart. She was a big boned woman. <laughs> we on the same page, you know what I mean when I say big boned woman? Now, mm, full disclosure, I did not see any bones. <laughs> But surely they were present. Some things we take on faith. She's leaving the five guys, bag of five guys in each hand. As she leaves, there was an incident. I'm trying to think how to make this friend. Oh, 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 she had a blowout. I'm not sure what you're cheering for. She blew out her crock. You know what a crock is? Everybody knows a crock, like a foam rubber gardening slipper that four-year-old white kids wear to the pool. Okay. <laughs> the official shoe of Connor, you with me? Okay, right? <laughs> I don't know what kind of load the crock is rated for. <laughs> now, load's an engineering word. I'm not being disrespectful. <laughs> I don't know what that number is but it was exceeded that day. <laughs> right there in the, in the old Cinco Hombres, right there. Yeah, like, <laughs> thanks for digging my Spanish. Um, now, I don't know all the science words, but she made a move. I would call it a plant pivot. She was able to complete the maneuver just fine. The croc, eh, not so much. <laughs> It accepted the plant, resisted the pivot. And I guess the compression and the torsion and the shearing force and the friction co I don't know, it turns into dust. <laughs> There's crock dust in the air. That was preceded by a hissing noise. And she look at me, I'm like, don't look at me, senor, that's all you. No, I'm wearing two shoes. You got a crock foot and a barefoot. <laughs> but I try to be helpful. I said, so what you want to do maybe is cut back to let's say, mm, uno, uno, one, one, uno, bag of five guys. Head over there to the peso less shoe store. <laughs> I guess some grown up shoes. 
This is not a story about the big bone woman. This is a story about plastic shoes. Some of y'all not getting them. Crocs are for people who think flip-flops just a little too dressy. <laughs> Can we agree this is hideous footwear, people? Oh. It doesn't even look like shoes. It looks like some nonsense your kid made at, at like summer camp. I need more Play-Doh. Now, I know where I am, and there's probably folks in the room wearing Crocs, whatever. Statistically speaking, there's at least one male in here wearing camouflage Crocs. <laughs> Where are you? Going, you can't see my feet. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> but Americans believe if it's comfortable, convenient, nothing else matters. I can prove it, y'all. They are still selling Snuggies. <laughs> Or slankets, if you can't afford a Snuggie, you get a slanket. <laughs> Millions of people make a decision to buy a special uniform for TV. <laughs> to watch TV. And I know, I know if you're honest, somewhere in your house, you got an old bathrobe. Take it out, turn it round, ta-da. <laughs> You don't need a Snuggie. You may want one, you don't need one. But they show those commercials and they're coming back and I'm here to warn you like Paul Revere. They show them at night, at night when you are what? Vulnerable. <laughs> Trying to go to sleep watching TV, the commercial gets in your head, click. The last thing you hear, click, before you drift, click off to sleep. Don't you hate being trapped in your blanket? I have never, ever, not one time, found myself trapped in a blanket. Look at me, I'm no athlete, but somehow I always manage to MacGyver my way out. Is there an epidemic of people showing up in the ER? I am mummified in my fleece. <laughs> it's just a blanket. There's no fasteners, no... It's the most basic of textile. The blanket has been around for... Th you know who had a blanket? Baby Jesus had a blanket. <laughs> swaddling clothes, that's a blanket. Ain't no sleeve in the swaddling clothes. Good enough for him, good enough for me. <laughs> and I'll just say it right now. I will say it. I don't mind saying it. If you're the kind of fella who finds yourself stuck in a blanket... You gotta stop eating in bed, that's nasty. You need to wash that blanket, and I know a laundromat where you can win a TV. I'm Kevin Terranova, thank you very much. Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now. And the lady, if he's sitting in the bank, she'll be going, Mom, Mom. <laughs>